love my fairy treasures. Okay, let me uh, get in frame here. Just a second, people. Okay. And actually, okay, let me bring it up a little bit. What the heck? This book is huge. That's my issue, you guys. I'm cutting off the bird's head. Okay, there we go. Okay. So, you guys, we're doing another altered book. And I've been doing this altered book. I just never called it an altered book because I didn't think of it like that. But now that I've been working on my other altered book that you guys have been seeing, this is an altered book, too. And what it is, it's, there's these books called Abandoned Places, uh, Abandoned Castles, Abandoned Wrecks, and there's another one out to Abandoned Cities. So I have Abandoned Castles, Abandoned Wrecks, and Abandoned Places. This one here is Abandoned Castles. And so what these books are is just a bunch of pictures of abandoned castles. And from Dee Dee Willingham, about three years ago, I learned how to take these books like this, or any book, or any magazine page, and do a reverse collage technique on it. So what I've done here, I mean, I'm gonna show you samples of other ones that I've already done. But what I've done here is this was all white in the background and text. I blacked that all out with black paint. Then I took um, some, you can either use matte medium. Um, I'm using a homemade matte Mod Podge. And I took this parakeet, the butterfly, this bird, two clock faces, this butterfly here and this hummingbird and pasted these all on here okay and um, I'll show you with acrylic paint how to paint all this and make this a whole world with all these pieces okay also painting up this castle and then after I did that I then took a thing now you could do you could paste everything on with matte medium and then slack it with matte medium okay and when you do that it makes it so it's a paintable surface but it also makes it so it's a wipeable surface almost vitally important. Okay, one second, my stupid camera. Make sure that everything's still focused. Okay. Um, or you could do this. I paste everything on with my homemade Mod Podge. You can use school glue, whatever, to uh, paste it on. And then to make it a paintable or wipeable surface, I spray on a thing called matte coating. Clear acrylic and matte coating you get at uh, Hobby Lobby. It's called Treehouse. But any clear matte coating will work. I mean clear matte spray paint. And it gives you this total matte surface to work on, just like matte medium does. Much cheaper. Okay? But if you have matte medium and you like matte medium and you don't mind paying for it or whatever, you're not cheap like me, then buy the matte medium. Whatever. It's just another option. Okay. So... We're at the point now where I'm going to start using acrylic paint on this and really bring this world together, okay? Let me turn this around so you guys can see. I'm sure I'll have to get myself in frame again. Let me see if I, need, if I can turn that off there for just a second so it's not so shining on there. Yeah, perfect. So you can... I have a light that... Oof, throws off some serious uh, shadowing so you can kind of see how this all looks and the pieces that, and you get your your pieces from magazines um, you can use National Geographic you can use Women's Day magazines you can use um, fashion magazines you can use I mean there's just so many things you guys a lot of us that do this kind of work already have a lot of collage events right okay and um, so that's where you can get your pieces from all right, so what this book looks like, let me show you what the cover looks like. That's what the, it's called Abandoned Castles. Um, and I get these books, Abandoned Castles, Abandoned Places, and Abandoned Wrecks. I get all these books on eBay for right between $7 and $10. They're well worth the money. So let me just show you a few other pages of like what the kind of stuff of, of castles that I like. Okay, I already have like, look at that castle. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay. I love that castle. These are my little pieces of paper of, that I've saved the castles that I want to work on. Look how beautiful that is. I even like that sky and everything. I would probably leave that sky. 
and add some beautiful stuff to it. Maybe some clouds and birds and, I don't know, planets maybe. But leave that sky. I love the way that looks. Um, love that castle. Is that fabulous or what? But I would do a double page spread and include this castle too. It could look really, really cool. Especially if you black all the white space out and you have these two castles and you add some pieces in. Oh, that'd be that'd be fabulous. Okay. And then look at that one. Oh, everything. That would be one of my pieces where I have water coming at it everywhere. Out of all these little windows, there'd be some water going everywhere. And maybe I'd make a, 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 um, an oceany thing down here that it all goes into. Maybe I'd make it all, you know, black so it's like a, it's a, it's a planet. We'll see. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so those are the ones that I want to eventually work on. So I have all of these saved. This is probably going to be the one that I work on next in this book. All right, so let me go back. Oh, and let me just quickly show you guys before I get started. And if you don't want to see the pages that I have finished in the past, go ahead and fast forward this. And you can get right to how I start this. But let me show you. I have Abandoned Places right here. And I've already worked in this book. Okay? And then there's Abandoned Wrecks. W-R-E-C-K-S. I've already worked in that one too, but I'm going to show you what I've done in this one. Okay. And I've gone over this a lot of times, so some people have already seen this, so bear with me. Okay, in this one, I added the zebra. I added the watch face, another watch face, this bird. I might have added that down there. No, I don't think I did. And then a bunch of the paint techniques. <coughs> All right. Here's another one that I did. This one I love was a bunch of old rusted pipes, and I have water just shooting out over all these everywhere, and mist going everywhere. I love it. Okay, I this is a jewelry bit here. This is a big watch face. This is a butterfly I added. This is a set of doors, and behind it I put a little watch peeking behind that set of doors. Um. Do I feel anything else? I'm trying to see if I see anything else. And then all these different paint techniques. Okay. Um, Nana, uh, Nana's Place. Is that her channel? Nana's Place? Yeah. You guys, um, I'll try to make sure I put her below. Let me write that down. Nana's Place. You guys have to go check her out. She's also working in this book. And she does some real cool stuff. I get some cool techniques from her, too. You pick up ideas from everyone, you know? She also learned this all from uh, Dee Dee Willingham. Uh, Nana's Place. So I will um, try to put her information below. She's working on this right now. She took a little break. Oh, look how cool that is. I can't wait to do that one. Love that. I want to do that one. That's really cool. That would be a really cool piece to do, too. Oh, I love this. I could just go through this book forever. There's just so much yumminess in here. I love that. Ah! I love this. I love that. I think that is fabulous. I can't wait to do that one. And see this one here? I would really collage this side up with a lot of collage bits. Almost use, more, you know, you have to use all collage bits. How cool would that be? So it would be a regular uh, collage with the paint techniques. And then mix it to match this and connect it over to this one. Oh, here's another one I did. And this one's called Save the Children. This is what's really sad. This is a basically a little kid gel for kids between the ages of 6 to 25. And after 18, you're not a kid. So I don't know why they're locking up kids with adults, but that's not good. <coughs> so <coughs> I wanted to create a, a picture of love and protection for these poor children. And so I have the owl overlooking all the children and the adults too, looking over their protection and their safety. Um, I have an element of time in here. The butterfly is also another sign of protection. And then I have a bunch of bubbles because bubbles are very playful, especially for the kids that are in here. Stars up in the sky, another form of protection in my view and, um, and uh, peacefulness and so, 
And then also I have a rose here and a rose here. And this is from um, Beauty and the Beast, a magazine I got. And I love that rose in there. I thought that would be beautiful. And this is just, this totally is in the front of the cells. And it represents love. So you guys, you guys see what I mean. So here's another one I did. This was a hospital, an old hospital. So I did this one. I did this one. This turned out pretty. So I'll go over all, I did a bunch of them already in here, but I'll go over more and more of them. Um, when I'm, when I'm, as I keep doing these, I'll keep showing you guys, showing, showing you where I'm at with them. Also, at the very end, when I'm finished all the pages that I want to do in here, I will have an overall look at everything. So, anyway, that was a long introduction, but I haven't worked in my abandoned places books for a while, so some people are new and haven't seen me working in these, so I needed to, like, you know, have an explanation. All right, let me get myself in talk amongst yourself for just a second while I get myself back in order, okay? Okay. And I do um, work with uh, a piece of wax paper between the pages because if not, you will have things sticking to other pages and you don't really want that. Okay. Um, and what I'll do is I will um, turn my book around here and there to show you guys what it looks like, okay? Um, I wish I could, there's a, like, they have an editing software, they have editing on YouTube, again, but it's real mild editing where I could turn all of this around, um, but I'm not sure it's working, because like I knew it wasn't working, so <clears throat> I'll work on things, and then I'll turn them around so you guys can see them. Okay, just a second, I'm getting my, I have my iPad here, and I, um, I want it charged up. So when I'm done with this, I can like still work on stuff and, um, what is this? Okay. So I can work on stuff and watch my iPad, but it needs to be charged up. Okay. Because when I'm not doing YouTube videos, whatever, I'm on YouTube watching you guys. Okay. Let's get started. Make sure I'm going to frame well. Okay. Here we go. So, what do I want to start out with first? I want to start out with the uh, sky first. So we're gonna start, we're gonna shoot some stars everywhere, all over the black. That's how we're gonna start this out. And I'm not gonna finish this on this video. I should say that. So we'll work for another 45 minutes probably, and then um, so I'm sure I've wasted about not wasted, but I've used it for about 15 minutes. Um. We'll have a part two, possibly a part three. So, but definitely a part two. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I just used Apple Barrel paint, acrylic paints. Just the cheapies from uh, Walmart. You can use folk art, but it needs to be flat. That's the big thing. It needs to be flat. Um, I haven't ever used this before um, for this because it does dry flat. So hopefully it doesn't dry too shiny. Um, you want it to dry matte. So I'm going to test this out today to see how this works. Um, it's the fine touch that we got at Hobby Lobby. Um, so anyway, just wanted to let you guys know about that. Okay. So I got a little white paint on here. Spray it with some water. Get this nice and liquidy. You can use a toothbrush. You can use another paintbrush. It's maybe a little bit on the stiff side. You can use a fan brush, which is what I'm going to use as I find it. Okay, and okay, just a second, you guys. That had some type of a stain or something in it, and it just um, and it's water. It was water soluble, so it just came up into my white paint. So just a second, so my white paint wasn't white anymore. <laughs> it was like some brown color. Anyway. Try that again. Rinse my brush. Yeah, we're good now. Okay. And let's start our splatters. 
And I don't care if splatter, I want splatters everywhere. So I'm gonna splatter the whole page. I love splatters. And to me, um, splatters in some areas mean stars and splatters in other areas mean snow. So I am all good with splatters all over this page. And if you don't want splatters on something, cover it up with a little piece of paper. You don't get splatters on it. Or snow or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Done with that. And there's a little drip right there that I don't want. I don't want a damn drip. I just want splatters. <laughs> so anywhere that you get too big of splatters and they turn into drips, just wipe them off. Okay. Let's dry that. So I'm going to dry that really quick. So talk among yourselves. I'm going to give this a quick dry. The next thing we're going to want to throw in some planets. making doing the splatters making stars and maybe snow or whatever look what that's already done to the page and we've only done that look how beautiful that is we could end it right there and be like okay done <laughs> okay um let's make some planets um just thinking what i want to do okay so i'm going to take some white acrylic paint and my finger because your finger is a good tool <laughs> and we're just gonna make some little circles do the circles need to be like perfect nope and the reason we I'm doing this is because this gives me a nice base to work off of right it whites it out so I can put whatever colors I want on top of here I'll, I'll kind of work with that in a second with the baby wipe. I'm just thinking for a second, you guys. Okay. Let me get a baby wipe because I think I... I might have too many plants. I also want to have some nebulas, and I need to have room for the nebulas, so that's what I'm trying to decide. Okay, so I don't want this one here. So what's nice about this is even if it dried, I could just wipe it right off. Isn't that cool? Very cool. So I can make a nebula there, and I, want, I need to make a nebula somewhere else. Okay, so I like that, and I'm trying to see if I want to do another. Yeah, let's get rid of this one here. And you guys will know what I'm talking about in a second. And if I need to put some more splatters there, I will here in a little bit. Okay, the other thing is I want it to round this out a little bit more right here. There's like a split in the page when I, oh, that's where a butterfly was at. Okay. It's like a little crease from when I glued <coughs> the butterfly on. Okay. Good enough there. Let's make this a little bit more round. Oh, 
Okay. We are good with that. Okay, I think that's what I want. All right, so now we need to, I'm going to put some colors into our little planet. And I'm using, I just bought this. I had some before and I used it all up. I love this, um, look at that, this lime color, it's the lime tree. I think it's pretty. And see, there's a little bit of a lime tree. I use the colors. That's how you can get your colors. Look at what colors you already have going on. We have like a lime color right here in that in that bird, right? We have a little lime over here in this parakeet. So that's how I'm, that's how I'm choosing my color palette. Um, this purple, we have that in this butterfly right here. And those are going to be planets too. Okay. And then we'll add a little bit of this blue color. Sorry, guys. All right. And what else we got going on? Oh, this is another thing. This dry, I know this dries really matte and it's really nice. This is a Dilutions acrylic paint love her stuff so we're going to use some of that let me see if i have a little spatula i know i do it's just a matter of where is it oh good i have a little butter knife okay so let's just take a little butter knife out and put a little bit of this right here and i'll also probably work off the knife too So as you can see, I just kind of mixed up some paint, some acrylic paint. So as long as it dries flat, you can use any acrylic paint. And the reason you want it to be flat is because you want to be able to draw on top of it if you need to, or um, paint on top of it. So, but if you do use something and it, it it dries shiny, well, you know, if it dries shiny, it'll probably also be too like too translucent also. So just use matte. Okay. So let's go to our planets. This is what I like to do. I like to pounce in a little bit of color. Let me get a paper towel. Okay. And then we'll pounce in a little bit of my line color. That's pretty. And we'll pounce in a little bit of this blue. And we'll pounce in a little bit of this turquoise. And let's pounce, and then take it and pounce together on it. Because you're looking to, you're looking to mesh. Okay, just a meshing. Ooh, that's pretty. What a pretty combination. Look how gorgeous that is. I want a little bit more of this um, lime green in here somewhere. I really like that color. Cool. There we go. So I'm going to do all three of these at the same time. Okay. Let's mesh in a little lime green there, lime green here, lime green here. Okay. I wipe off my finger in between. I have a little paper towel on the side. Let's mesh in some here. Um, in my other book that has nothing but words basically in it, a couple pictures, but it's mostly a, you know, a regular book, um, the one I've been working on, you can, um, you can do a page like this in that too. Just do all collage bits. So you collage, you do a whole collage thing and then you do techniques like this, which I will also do in that book. So to show you guys what I'm talking about. Oh, did I put purple in that last one? Oh, I didn't put purple in that last one. I'm going to throw some purple in this one. Okay, and then uh, this blue. I don't know how I skipped over that purple last time. But I didn't even need it, so whatever. 
Okay. And in this one, I want to throw a little bit more of the green in there. Because I love that green. Okay, so. I got a lot of paint on my nails. Okay, so let's start meshing. Love it. Start meshing. You know what's weird about the purple? The purple is just meshing right out. It's not even staying there. Huh. How weird. Okay. And then if you get out of your little roundness, just go back over it with a baby wipe and round it back out. Okay, and as you can see, it does have to be perfectly round. Is that perfectly round? No. Okay, so, and then save your colors because you'll be going back and forth to those, I'm sure. Okay, so um, what I like to do is I like to take my, this is one of my favorite brushes for this type of work, and it is a fine liner brush. Grabbing a paper towel here. And this is what a fine liner brush is. Okay? Get them at Michael's. They're about seven or eight dollars, but use a coupon. And oh, I just love all those colors together. It's so pretty. Um, I like to take some white acrylic paint, like that right there. Get my brush loaded up. And then go around them so they look kind of like planets, so they got something going around them. And I don't like the lines to be totally like even, so this is going to be thinner going around here. And even maybe skip a little space. See what I'm saying? Like that. I just think it looks more natural than drawing like a complete circle. But if that's not your thing and you want a complete circle, and for it to look totally even, and that's what you should do. This is just what I think looks more natural. Okay. And it's just one little technique after the next and you build this world up. I absolutely love it. When I learned it from Dee Dee Willingham about three or four years ago, I was hooked. You can also take these techniques and make um, art cards. Do the same thing, but just um, take like an index card size and collage a bunch of bits on and then use these type of techniques and make little art cards. You can turn them and make little, um, what do they call those? Uh, the trading card, artist trading cards, you could do that too. And give them out to your crafty friends. Okay, so I love that. That looks good. We're gonna let that dry. And on a few of these, I think I wanna put that little, you know that little, that little circle that goes like that on there but I want to wait and um, and let those dry for a second you know what I want to do let's quickly add a little bit more um, splatters and I want some splatters going over the planet too so let's do that see some more splatters to go over those planets and also then there's some more splatters um, in those sections that uh, we had to erase there we go 
Love it. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and let me dry that real quick. It'll take a few seconds, and then we're going to do some nebulas, too, and then we're going to make stars and all that. I haven't done nebulas for a while, so let me experiment. So if I have to erase or something like that, you're, I'm warning you in advance right now. <laughs> you're like, okay, Angela, if you have to erase. <laughs> That's the nice thing about pencil. Uh, you can always erase it. That's what I love about pencils. I am using Prismacolor pencils and Jane Davenport pencils. But you don't have to. You can use Crayolas for this. So does not matter that's what I love about this you can do this with such cheap products 50 cent apple barrel acrylic paints from Walmart you can use Crayola pencils for this um, I mean nothing I'm using is expensive so or has to be a name brand nothing I do ever has to be expensive or a name brand and I think things look better when you don't always buy like and on no shakes, I love me some Tim Holtz, okay? But everything doesn't have to be, you don't have to have a Tim Holtz product, or you don't have to have this product or that product to do stuff like this. And I think that's what makes your stuff can look really more original. Because someone can't look at you and go, oh, that's a Tim Holtz product, right? And not that there's something wrong with Tim Holtz products, because believe me, I love me some Tim Holtz. But mix it up. Yeah, this nebula right here is looking really good. And kind of uh, press lightly on your pencil. And then that way, is that purple going to show up? Ooh, that is going to show up pretty. That way you can put layers. So just go really light with your pencil so you can do a lot of layering. So you can go over and over things. Oh, that's pretty coming like it's coming from that right there. I love it. Okay. Um, I wanted to do another nebula like just in the sky right here. It's just coming across like that, giving it a little angle. Okay. Throw a little green in here. I throw the white down first so that um, I throw the, hopefully I'm still on, let me see if I can turn my book and be in frame still, yeah. I throw the white down so that, um, so that it whites it out because then you can see the color better. gives it a little base. And I'm going to add a little bit more here. Okay. Um, let's add a little of this turquoise in here. Let's add a little bit of this purple. Love it. That looks really, really cool. And I'm going to throw another big nebula right here, like going 
like it's coming across the sky like this. You see how free this artwork is? It's just so cool how freeing it is. Okay. Okay. And let's throw the green. This is a Jane Davenport. No, this isn't. This is a Prismacolor. Uh, what is it? Prismacolor chartreuse. Yeah. Love me some chartreuse. To me, that's what this lime green is. It looks very sharp. See how they look the same? Similar? That chartreuse is just, oh, I love it. I love it mixed with purple. Let's throw the purple right next to that chartreuse. I think that's such a pretty combination. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. The chartreuse and the purple next to each other. Gorgeous. color in here too. Okay. Love these nebulas. I think these look absolutely beautiful. It's exactly what I wanted. So excited. Okay. Keep all your pencils out. And again, I chose my pencil colors with the colors that we have in this picture. Okay. So choose your, your acrylic paints the same way and choose your pencils that same way. Okay. I mean, are we doing mixed media or what? We're mixing up so much fabulousness. Are these dry yet? Okay. Um, I want to draw the circle in here. I think it's going to go around this. And sometimes I do this right and sometimes I don't. I'm trying to think how I want to do this. Do I want to go like that? You know what, you guys? I will draw the circles like the little planet circles, I gotta um, look that up. Like if you don't understand exactly how you want something to look, Google it really quick and then get a picture of it. So I'll wait till I get a picture of it. And I'll do that in part two and we'll put some of those little circles on there. Okay, let me get a drink. Cause I can draw those in at any time. Okay, next let's do some let's do some stars okay I probably need to come in closer so we'll start over here with the stars yeah perfect I'm glad we came in that close so you guys can really look see what the heck I'm doing all right so we're gonna start over here okay Take some white acrylic paint. Water that a little bit because it started drying. Okay. Okay, take some white acrylic paint and your liner brush and it's just a three flick out thing one two three and these are just little these are like your little stars are the are the um spiders so that's one set of stars now these are your medium your medium stars we're gonna do shooting stars in just a minute This starts giving you depth in your picture, you know, because you start seeing all those, all the splatters with your stars far away, then you're going to see some stars close up, right? Oh, actually, I know what I want to put there. Oh, I'm sorry. I went over here. To, I'm right here. I went over to the other side, you guys. I started putting stars in there, too. See? And I forgot to change my camera angle. Sorry about that. Okay, so I put stars in right there, too. See? So I did the same thing over there. Okay. 
we'll stay on this side because I want to show you something on this side. Then we'll zoom back out. But when I do when I do fine work like this, like these stars, I really want you guys to see what, what I'm doing. So um, I think I'm going to do this with this Posca. If it doesn't work out, then we'll erase it off of here. Sometimes I like to use a, the, the liner brush for this, and sometimes I want to use this Posca. The Posca's going to work. Okay, so I'm making this really... Um, really big star. And I love it. Look how cool that looks. And I did it all with the Posca. Love that big star like that. Okay. So now we have a big star. We have our little stars in the background. We have our medium sized stars. And now we're going to do some shooting stars. And we'll start over on this side since this is where we're at. And we'll start doing some shooting stars. In fact, we'll do a shooting star right across, right next to or across our nebulas. Look how cool that looks coming out across the nebulas. Love it. So you just put a dot down or use a dot that's already there and just kind of go out. Oh, something I haven't done yet, which I wanted to do. I'm going to have it go right across this parakeet. How cool is that? Um, I didn't put uh, little stars um, on my planets, which I wanted to do. So let's do that. Put a couple of the medium-sized stars there. Okay, I'm going over to the other side, the other page, and that you're not, that's not in focus. So just a second, I'll be right back. Okay. Also, uh, let's do a shooting star coming right across the planet. Okay. Let's put a shooting star coming right across this parakeet. See. When you do all that kind of stuff, it makes everything come into, it, it, it makes everything have a relationship with everything else in the painting. The parakeet is now in space, right? Because now we've got shooting stars going over the parakeet. The nebula is a part of the whole thing because we've got shooting stars going over the and the planet. See, so it just brings everything together. That's how I see it anyway. Okay, so love all that. Um, I think I want to do one more shooting star on this parakeet. There we go. That's kind of a big one. I don't want it that big. Just a second. Isn't that nice how if you make if you mess up, you can just you can just um, wipe it off. That makes things less scary. Like if you mess up, you can just wipe it off. It's not like a major ordeal. Okay. So we're gonna go over to the other side. So let me move my book. You know, I finally learned that about these type of things. Instead of moving, like, the camera, like, get your camera where you want it, you know, like if you need to have a close-up, <clears throat> but move the book. I was moving the camera everywhere. I'm like, what are you doing? You dumb, you know what? <laughs> yeah, I was talking to myself, calling myself a dummy. Okay, um, again, let's do some shooting stars going right across these nebulas. Cool. That one's kind of big, but I like it. And let's do um, this one coming right here. Like that. So it's like we got media showers or shooting stars going right over these nebulas. How fabulous is that? I don't know if I'd like that. Kind of went that too far. Okay. There we go. And you don't have to be too too picky. I mean, if something you do something you don't really like it, and you don't you don't know if to leave it or not, leave it. You know what? There's going to be so much going on. Um. When we're done, <laughs> so. 
<laughs> no one's going to notice one little thing. <laughs> Believe me. There's going to be a lot going on. I almost said something. Anyway. I won't say that. It was a little, kind of a little political. <laughs> we don't need to have that. Okay. Moving on. Okay. You know, I, I see another shooting star writing another one right here. This is another thing I wanted to say. Um, well, it's kind of the same thing with the parakeet. Remember how we did some shooting stars over the parakeet? Have some shooting stars or do some things on top of the butterfly also. So you know what? Let me... Oh, you can still see. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead. Let me get some white paint. I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw some medium-sized stars over this butterfly. Because that's what this is right here. This is a butterfly. And we're going to treat this butterfly like a planet. Okay. And I love this hummingbird. We're going to leave the hummingbird as a hummingbird. I'm not going to turn it into anything else. I love it being that beautiful hummingbird. I got that hummingbird from a hummingbird magazine that my husband made me buy. And the reason I say that was this magazine was like $15. But I was looking at it just gasping because it was full of hummingbirds. And I was like, oh, this is so beautiful. I love this magazine. I said, but I can't spend $15 on a magazine to tear it up. And he goes, yes, you can. He goes, you do all this collage work. You love doing it. You're getting this magazine. He's so good to me. And he does it to me all the time. He'll be like, you're getting it. Because I'm, I, he's not as cheap. He's not as cheap as I am. He likes a good deal, but he'll spend the money. If it's something he really wants, he really, really wants, he'll spend the money. But he's not wasteful. I mean, he only spends it when he really, really wants something. But um, he's not afraid to spend a dollar <laughs> like me. Okay, so while we're doing all this, let's just go ahead and make these into planets right here. This is a butterfly. This whole thing right here is a butterfly. Okay, like this. This whole thing here is a butterfly. But I'm treating it, I'm making the butterfly turn into like its own little planet, right? And then we're going to have, so this whole butterfly is a planet, but I'm going to make planets on top of this, of the butterfly planet. We'll call it a butterfly planet, and there's planets within the butterfly planet. There we go. And these are the things that, these are the things that come up and you just start working them out as you start doing this stuff. Like you can look at this whole thing and come up with kind of a little plan or whatever, but you start seeing and discovering stuff as you, um, as you're doing this. pretty cool so I'm just encircling this with white because um, it will give it more structure to look like a planet right right let's also throw some shooting stars over this over this okay I'm gonna do a shooting star going the other way I'm kind of doing my shooting stars too much one way, so don't be afraid to have it go another way. It's just that my hand, it's in a weird position. That's why I kind of keep doing it the same way because I can't turn my book a lot because then you guys won't be able to see what I'm doing, so. Oops. Oops, I got some paint on my pencil. Don't want that. Okay. Just a second, my brush was getting a little bit clogged up with paint. Okay, I don't like that one. Just a second. Let me get a new baby wipe out. I was at such a weird angle on this one right here. Let's just wipe that one off. Okay.
I was just saying that to you guys. I'm at you're at, I'm at a weird angle and I can't just switch my angle all the time because then you guys can't see what I'm doing if I get out of frame. So I'm gonna go down here on my butterfly and you guys aren't gonna see me I think for a second, so I'll be back up in just a second. I got another planet to outline. Okay. Okay, um, hopefully you guys can see right here. Yeah. Cool. All right, so we got enough, we got enough going on. You know what I think I want to do? I'm going to erase the shooting stars here. Okay. And I'm going to put another one of those, um, another one of those larger stars right here. I think that would look really cool. Okay, I'm going to turn my book. Hopefully you guys can still see me. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to turn my book a little bit. Okay, if I can stop messing up. Cool. I just felt like another star should go there. Okay. That looks really good. I'm thinking if I want to throw any lightning in, but I think I got enough going on that I don't want to throw any lightning in, I think. Yeah, no lightning. Okay. There's things you can throw lightning. I could throw wind into this whole thing, but I got a lot going on, so I'm not gonna throw any lightning or wind in. Um, I'm just looking here. We'll let all that dry. Okay, um, we're gonna go down to the bottom. Okay, first we're gonna come back out so we can get a wide view. Let me just get myself back in complete frame. Perfect, and bring it up a little bit. Okay, let me have a drink. This looks pretty fabulous. Look what we've done so far, you guys. We could stop right there, but we're not. <coughs> we're adding more, baby. We're adding more. <laughs> okay. I want to do some mist down here in all this black that I have, which I think will look really cool. Um, like a mist nebula, like a misty nebula. Okay. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to use, what am I going to do? Oh. I got this from Nana's place. I, she uses the, her paint pens a lot, and I really like how she uses her paint pens. So, and she uses them, and then she smudges them all the time. So, what I want to do is I'm going to take this like this. I usually do this with a baby wipe, but I think I saw her do this with a um, paint pen. And you just smear. Look how cool that is. Okay, and you smear it so it looks like mist or smoke, right? Like I said, I've done this before, but I did it with um, I did it with a baby wipe and acrylic paint. So that's another thing. You know, let me do it with that because also. And the reason I'm saying that is because what if you don't have uh, a paint pen, specifically a Posca paint pen? I don't want you not to be able to do anything. I want you to do everything you want to do. So let me show you with a baby wipe. You can take a baby wipe with your finger. If you don't have a baby wipe, get a paper towel and wet it. Okay? I just wanted to try that with the Posca pen because it was like a cool little technique. Um, and take your baby wipe with your index finger, a little bit of white paint. Wipe off the white paint. You don't need very much paint on here at all because you want it to be misty, right? And you just go like this. And 
I'm going all the way up. Look at that. Same effect, right? So, let me do it again. Same effect. Okay, so it's really the same effect. Now, see how it's a little bit too solid? If it gets too solid, yeah, I got too much paint, just go back over it with the baby wipe. And it'll mist it out a little bit more. See? Cool. I'm have a little more paint on there. Okay, there we go. It's a fine line of too much and too little. Anyway, <laughs> you're like, okay, Angela, calm down. Um, and I love that how I just took that mist right up the side of the page. Okay, so, um, you can also use acrylic paint and go with a baby wipe and kind of go over this also, which I'll do, I'm going to try that really quick, because you also you can use your pencils too. I'm going to try both, because I don't know which one I like better, or, you know, it's probably not even a thing of what I like better, it's probably just do it either way. Okay, you know what I like? I'm gonna do the pencils. And the reason I'm gonna do the pencils, you can do it, do paint with a baby wipe with this technique, or you can use your pencils. But the reason I want to use pencil is because I think I'm gonna be able to have more control and get more color on. You're not you don't have as much control when you use the paint for this part that I'm gonna show you. Alright, I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. You're like, girl, what are you talking about? I'm gonna show you. Alright, but we're gonna use pencil over this acrylic paint, and using acrylic paint first and then pencil over it. It's beautiful. Well, as you saw me do the nebulas up here. All right, so let me dry these, uh, this mist. So this is the technique if you also want to make smoke. Um, you probably wouldn't color it like I'm going to do right now if you want it to be smoke. This just looks like smoke right here, right? Or it looks like fog, okay? You can take fog or smoke and go right across your picture too. That looks really pretty too. But right now we're going to make this um, like some smog, like some colored smog or some colored mist, okay? So I'm going to take my um, favorite color chartreuse here and I'm going to make sure I'm in frame. And we're going to start putting some color in this mist. And be nice and light with your pencil. No reason to bear down. And the acrylic paint, you guys, is a beautiful... Um, is a, a beautiful surface to lay pencil on top of it. It has enough tooth to it that you can go right over acrylic paint. With a with the pencil, watercolor is another gives another good base tooth for colored pencil. When I do my girls, a lot of times I'll do watercolor, and then I'll add uh, pencil on top of the watercolor on my faces when I when I paint my girls. Okay, then I want to use, um, I think this teal color. Let me see if this is the one I want to use. Or is it this blue? Oh, it's this 
teal. Okay, I'm going to use some of this teal. So I'm using this, uh, I'm budding up this teal color. It's a Jane Davenport one. Yeah. So I'm using the chartreuse. This is chartreuse and this is a Jane Davenport turquoise. She's calling it emerald, but it's like a turquoisey color. And that's what I'm bidding up against each other. So that we get this colored mist. We won't call it fog, we'll call it colored mist. Colored mist sounds more magical. And we all know I love to be magical. I like everything to look magical. As magical as it can be. Oh, that looks so pretty. And you can go over, I just went over it too. You can go right over the black with the colored pencil and it'll show up nice too. So just to let you know that you can do that. You can go over the black with a colored pencil. You don't have to lay down the white first. But I would do that if you want it to look misty. I would lay down the white first. That looks so pretty, I think. I'm going to turn my book around so you guys can see where we're at. Let me look at the time situation and see what we're doing for time. Yeah, we've been going for an hour and 15 minutes. So we'll end this one here, okay? So you guys see what I did. And we will end this one here. When we come back in part two, uh, part two, we'll finish this up. Um, this one went, is going a lot faster than I thought it was. Oh, I wanted to point something out. How I made the planets here is these were already little spots on the butterfly, right? They were already circles. So I even have to put any color inside my circles. They were already like that. So I just went around with my um, white paint and my um, and my uh, skinny little paintbrush here and just made little circles going around it. So I made those into planets out of that butterfly. When we come back, we will take the time time pieces and draw some some lines out from the time pieces. Okay, we'll draw draw some lines out from them. Like the time is beaming out into this planet or this Earth. Let's call it Earth. Let's call it a planet. Um, we will take. We'll take these windows. Sorry about that, you guys. I'm taking on my phone. I'm not sure who that is, but it'll go away in a second. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, when we come back, um, I will also have all these windows, all these little areas right here, there'll be water pouring out of these windows. Okay. So that's another thing we'll do when we come back. Um, this is another butterfly over here with this bird. Um, I may put some more planets on this uh, bird, on this uh, bird, on this butterfly. We'll see. The parakeet, I just love the way it looks. I love the way the bird looks. So I want to leave it as a bird. I want to leave that, but we may, we'll probably turn this, we'll put some planets on here. Okay, on this butterfly here. Um, so, when you come back, we'll be almost finished, you guys. I may go ahead and put the planets on here because you guys have already seen me do that. I won't do the water because you guys haven't seen me do that yet. And I won't put the little um, the little beams coming out from these watches because you haven't seen me do that yet. So, yeah. So part, go to part two. We'll be finishing this up in part two. There won't be, there won't be uh, three parts. Sometimes, like this one's coming came together really fast. Sometimes, you know, it takes a lot to put, bring one, bring a page like this together. Sometimes it comes together really quick. You never know. And this one came together pretty quick. I mean, to almost be done in an hour and 15 minutes. Well, okay. And I say that, but, you know, I already had had pasted down all of my collage bits. I already had taken the black paint and blacked it all out with the black acrylic paint. So, you know, maybe an hour and a half, really. So, okay, you guys. Um... If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to do so. If you can give this video a thumbs up, that'd be great. Any comments or questions, leave it below. Come visit me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and I will see you guys in part two. All right. Bye, guys.